Siwapili, Rose Amador LeBeau, and this is Native Voice TV. Welcome to the show. Today we're going to talk about a very serious subject, and it's the fact that American Indians have some of the highest health disparities in the country. We know that diabetes is the, uh, the highest killer of American Indians, besides white people. But we're going to talk about Pathways to American Indian and Alaska Native Wellness Program, or PAW for short. It's a partnership with several Bay Area um, Native American organizations to research new ways to help indigenous people become healthier, including with diabetes prevention. And today, I'd like to introduce a few people who are going to tell me about Paul. And to my right is L. Cross. He's a long-standing and very respected elder in our Native American community. Welcome, Al. And you've been on the show before. Yes. So you have much experience being here. Not and, that much. <laughs> and Paul Flores. Welcome, Paul. Thank you. Thanks for having me. And Adrian Kendrick. And Adrian, you. you've been through the program, so you can tell us about your experiences uh, being in the program itself. Yeah, it was very much a, a uh, life-changing event. Well, why don't you start with introducing yourself, Adrian, well, sure. and we'll come back this way. <coughs> well, that's fine, sure. I'm Adrian Kendrick, and I'm an enrolled member of the Ogallala Sioux Tribe from Pine Ridge, South Dakota. My grandmother and mother were both born, as my uncle, were born on the reservation. They all went to school on the reservation. And uh, so I moved away and became an urban Indian, like a lot of us, and uh, am now over the years, I'm 70 years old, and over the last many years, I'm reconnecting with my culture. Wonderful. And it's been a wonderful journey, so. Well, thank you for being here. And Paul? I'm Paul Flores IV. Um, I have Apache and Yaqui uh, blood in my family, also Irish and Italian, so. I'm very mixed. Um, I got involved in the Powell community about 15 years ago. Uh, I'm also an activist and um, I believe that we need to get active in whatever it is we believe in and, and put ourselves uh, at the front line no matter what it is, if it's something you're passionate about. And so uh, I feel very honored to be a part of this team that's doing something for our community. And I'm looking forward to my one year anniversary. This July I just got married. so. Well, congratulations. congratulations. And Al? My name, yeah, I'm Al Cross. Thanks, Rose, for introducing me. Mm -hmm. um, I've been in San Jose now 60 years and um, been working with Indian community for all that period, mainly uh, different programs, starting programs, activation, you know, doing counseling and doing um, community action programs. Um, I've been with this particular program, Pathways, Pathways to American Indians and Alaska Natives, for now for four years. Wow. So it's relatively a new program, but then on the other sense, we've got about four years going so far. So we're trying out some new avenues or ways to try to attack, in this particular case, diabetes. Mm -hmm. As you mentioned, Rose, earlier that, you know, American Indians have seem to have taken the brunt of a lot of maladies that have come across this, the board, you know, across the screen, you want to call it, trying to deal with that. So I'm originally from Hida, uh, North Dakota, Fort Berthold Indian Reservation, and uh, I too as a young man left there. So I've been urbanized now for 55 years, and so I'm, I'm that particular person that's called an urban Indian now, that mm -hmm. is distinction between urban and reservation. Um, so it appears that uh, I'll be here probably the rest of my life here in San Jose, which I found a new place. But uh, I think we're, we're again trying, like you said, to find a way to attack or deal with some of these disparities that are going on with American Indians. Why do you think we have these health disparities with the indigenous people? That's a good question, <laughs> and it, it's a very complex question, I think. Uh, one can look back, of course, and if you look at other populations that were conquered or that were colonized in particular, you'll find the uh, same patterns almost kind of emerging uh, with disparities also in you know education and employment mm -hmm. and health and all those areas. Uh, 
And American Indian is no different. You know, ours was a colonization that began way back in, in 500 years ago, you know, with the first onslaught that came of, from Europe. Um, there's, I was reading an article here recently, I read a book, small book, and I'd like to quote from that in terms of what happened to American Indians. This is a, a book by Neil Salisbury, and he did a critical bibliography about the Indians of New England. And I think a lot of that applies, you could apply that to Indians all the way across country, what happened there. This is, these were some of the initial contact people back in that area. Mm -hmm. And he says that, he says, on one hand, it's quite obvious that a history marked with enormous upheavals and ongoing tragedy. Massive mortality, military defeat, geographic dis dislocation, economic deprivation, and subjugation to political systems based on alien cultural values and racist ideologies. And he says, whether this whole, this whole, whether the future holds relief from this poverty and inequality that has prevailed since conquest, it is by no means certain as of this writing. And he says, yet, the literature surveyed here, and he read, he did a bunch of critical bibliography of literature pertaining to the New England Indians. Mm -hmm. And he says, the literature surveyed here chronologically and topically, imbalanced as it is, also reveals underlying elements of continuity, triumph, forever how transformed, today's Indians are the biological, culturally, and political descendants of peoples who began to settle this land, you know, 12,000 years ago. So just that little bit, and he's talking about some of the initial contact back in the New England area. That could be applied to all the tribes across America. They underwent the same upheavals, and he talks about. I think, you know, we, we've had a, a plethora of diseases that have plagued the Indians across the, across the time. When I was a young man back on a reservation, the major Indian killer then was tuberculosis, mm -hmm. and that was taking many, many lives. Um, and then as it transformed up and as, as the culture changes, of course, then we took on, you know, heart disease. We took on a plethora of, again, another just a maraud of other types of illnesses. Today we're dealing with diabetes. And this is what we're trying to find out about the diabetes is ways to deal with diabetes in our community. And this Prevention. particular community here is, is in San Jose, California, which is an urban community and something that could be transposed to other urban communities across the country, because mm -hmm. I think they all probably have the same makeups. But um, as we go along, you know, we're plugging along and working on things, and we're doing research now, which I think finally we're going to try to use some particular issues in, in research. And one is that concept we've developed and we're using mm -hmm. is um, historical trauma, okay. so we're going to try to interweave historical trauma aspects into our, our training program and our research program, so I think we're in good shape. Excellent. Now, all of you are members of the American Indian Community Action Board, correct? Yes. Now, Paul, can you tell me um, why people should participate, why Native, urban Natives, people in our community, Indigenous people right. will help by participating in this particular program? Well, I think this program is beneficial, especially to, like Al said, the San Jose Native population, um, because for one thing, it's not, a, it's not a test on the people. It, it's a research program with the people. And like you mentioned, we're all par part of the um, action board, and uh, we are all members of the Na uh, Native American community in San Jose. There's um, about 10 to 12 more of us that aren't here today, but we have a direct influence on the decisions that this research team um, uh, makes because we are part of that research team. Mm -hmm. So instead of having uh, um, outsiders come and research us as a people, we are, are inviting our own community, hey, let's look at this problem that's affecting our families, affecting us, and let's see what we can do together 
rather than depending on someone else. Let's fight our own way out of this hole that we've been put in. And so as members come and um, join and participate, uh, they're going to be given so many benefits uh, besides the, the health experts that will be there to give you um, insight on, on dieting, on food, on exercise. You're also going to be given um, a 16-week program. So we're doing this for 16 weeks. And um, each week you get a special enhancement class that is, that is going to be designed and, and um, run by our Native people. So, so we're, not just, um, we're not just doing a bunch of science testing stuff. We're actually getting together as a community and, and we are learning together how to combat this disease. They're also going to be given tons of prizes, um, gift cards, athletic wear. Wow, it sounds exciting. Yeah. <laughs> There's, there's too much. There's too much to even name here. So I would just encourage everyone to check out our website and and collect the information at the end of the show, and um, uh, just to get a list of the full benefits. Mm -hmm. uh, there's also the one I got to highlight is access to the Timpani Center. So there's this really cool gym. It has a therapeutic heated pool. So it's like a natural hot spring, Scott wow. chlorine. But you can go in there, soak your sore muscles at the end of the day. Um, they got a full basketball gym, so if you like to, to play sports, you can get in there. They have weights, uh, they have an exercise room, and anyone that likes to dance but can't make it out to the powwows, you can come and do some uh, Zumba dancing there as well. And that's just a few things that the center offers. But and could you tell me a little bit about the eligibility for the program? Right. So um, if you are eligible, there's a, quite a few little things you got to hit. Number one, you got to be 21 or older. So um, those of you turning 21, you don't have to go out to the bar and celebrate. You can come out and celebrate with us and get in this program and live a I long, like healthy life. Um, you unfortunately can't be already diagnosed a diabetic, but you can still get involved. You can still be a coach. So if you have a family member that's not there yet but has some risk of becoming diabetic, you can bring them in and um, still be a part of the team, still be a part of this uh, um, experience. Um, you also have to be native, native to uh, the United States. To um, you can be native Hawaiian, native Mexican, all the way down the South American continent. Uh, you can be um, indigenous. Indigenous, basically, basically yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so it's not just it's not just Native American to the United States. Mm -hmm. So. We're inviting all natives out, all native So people. indigenous to the Americas, basically, right? There you go. That's it. Okay, good. Well, it sounds really exciting, and there's so many good benefits coming out of it. So, uh, so if it's really a prevention program, right? Right. So if someone in your family has diabetes, you might want to go so you can prevent yourself exactly. from getting it, right? Exactly. And you can also share some of the tips you learned along mm -hmm. the way. Right. It's life-changing. Yeah. It's going to be life-changing. Sounds pretty exciting. <coughs> Good benefits. Um, so, Adrian, you actually participated in the f one of the first segments of the program, or yeah, tell well, me about that. Well, Rose, I'd be glad to tell you about that. It was really a life-changing event for me and the other participants. This was an earlier iteration of the program. It was simply the 16-week program, and each week we covered a different topic. It wasn't just about diet, but it was, in fact, we didn't use the word diet. We used the word healthy eating. Mm -hmm. It really got down to changing our behavior, the way we thought, the way we bought food, the way we prepared it, uh, the way we stored it, uh, and some of the other elements in the 16-week class, that earlier iteration I'm speaking of, covered not just the, the food element, but the, the physical part exercise and so forth. Uh, I chose to go to the uh, Silicon Valley YMCA and, and uh, that, that was how I got my exercise. Mm -hmm. But it was more than that even. It was the mental attitude too. But that came from the support within the group. Early on we started to uh, share ideas about food choices, food preparation, uh, things of that and became fast friends early on and supported each other. Mm -hmm. Every week we did something I called true up and that was we went in and weighed ourselves and shared that weight and uh, shared our successes so it was a very positive 
sort of experience for us. Uh, so I had some amazing results from that 16 weeks, Rose. Did you lose weight? Yes, I did. You did? Oh, I better I lost, join that. <laughs> uh, I lost 17 pounds in 16 wow, weeks. But you know what's more important, Rose? Your health. I quit taking half of the meds I was taking <gasps> really? just in that short period of time. So when I heard that they were going to uh, so re recreate this and, and simply make it better um, by um, using some d indigenous methods, I said, yeah, I can put time into that because if one person benefits like I benefited, it's all mm -hmm. good. It's mm, all good. Absolutely. So, yeah, it, uh, it w and I think what's more important, it changed my attitude uh, because I realized for the first time that somebody else cared a little bit about whether or I not, wh when I trued up, you know, as I said, but also when I fall off the wagon, I know how to get back on. Mm. Are there people in your family that have diabetes? Yeah, my grandmother in, at an advanced age got diabetes, and my dad uh, uh, as well did in heart disease. And, uh, you know, it, it became a matter within this group of in your family unit at, at home, you say, okay, Grandma, you got diabetes, and Mom, are you going to mm -hmm. get diabetes? But in this group of people, it was, hey, let's walk the red road. We had different thoughts about how to make our lives better. And that held on to this day. I'm a better person for having taken that class. Well, when they said, we're going to make this better, I said, hey, I'm in. So how are we going to make this better? Mm -hmm. Paul talked a little bit about that. We're going to use, in, in, uh, we're going to use various indigenous methods. Uh, digital stories, for instance, is, is one but thing. Tell me about the digital stories. What's that sure. all about? Sure, and, and Paul and, and Al can help me with that a little bit too, I think. Uh, on the digital stories, right, Al? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, Al, good. did you do a digital story? Yes, I did. Tell I did me about it. His what was, was that all about? Was good, and I think he should. Uh, well, the idea behind the digital story is to, is sort of a revelation. I think you know, telling yourself about how things, one particular issue or a multitude of issues, how they affected you and what it meant to you, mm -hmm. and it's kind of like uh, I would guess uh, confessional. Mm -hmm. But it's trying to see yourself, you know, versus on a on a video, and it has kind of a big effect. I think it, it played a large large part because we went through maybe a series of about five weeks or six weeks to finish it up. We had good technical support and came out with some very nice stories about our lives, you know, and oh, that was good. good. So hopefully that those stories will help us to come to some conclusions about what we need to do, you know, with ourselves. Uh -huh. you know. that, mm -hmm. So that's just one of the elements. And the, uh, the other one, the expression through photos. Uh -huh. And that was where we, the, we took a collection of photos that supported that whole uh, adventure in our lives, where we came from, where we are, uh -huh. and uh, that family unit. So it really spoke to us as an individual, spoke about us as an individual. In this enhanced version that Paul started talking about here that we're so excited about mm -hmm. and hope people benefit from is we're going to have t <coughs> talking circles. And that is sort of a enhanced debrief, if you will, after mm -hmm. each and every class. But it just gets better, Rose. More than that, we're looking at having uh, inviting traditional healers. Okay. And I can really see the value in that. And here's why. Mm -hmm. Many years ago, my mother was a uh, nurse. At, uh, and she worked in Albuquerque at a PHS hospital for, for American Indians. Mm -hmm. And one of her nursing friends was so sick, she said, I gotta go back to the reservation. That she'd been to every doctor that she knew, and every doctor that all the nurses knew. She wasn't getting better. So my mom says, hey, we're going to Canyon de Chez, you wanna go? I said, yeah, sure, I was visiting. So we went to Canyon de Chez, went down, stayed with her parents in their Hogan overnight. She went off to a ceremony, came back, all well. Mm -hmm. And I thought, this is amazing. Is it mind yes. over matter or what is it? Years later, I had irritable bowel problem. Just could not find a doctor that knew how to treat this. I called my mom. Mom, I think it's time. She kept saying, I know what you need. I flew back to Albuquerque. She set up a ceremony for me. We went, and I think it's been so long ago now I can talk about this. Mm -hmm. We typically don't talk about these things, but my mother set up a ceremony for me. And you guessed it, my irritable bowel syndrome went away. Mm. So 
is it here? Yeah, we hear that here? a lot yeah. in the community. Where, where is it really? So having that connection to your native past mm -hmm. is so important. And I think this program is finally going to do that for the people we care most about, our other Native American friends. And a lot of the Native input to the curriculum, Paul, this comes from board member suggestions? Or yes. how does that come about? Um, not just with the enhancement classes, but anything that is going to be put on by the, the PAW group has to run through the action board first. So basically, if you could just split it up into two groups, you have your researchers that are coming from colleges and uh, Stanford University and, and San Jose State. You have your researchers, and then you have your native community. Mm -hmm. And we all sit together. It's open if anyone wants to come to the meeting and see what we're doing. Um, this isn't behind closed doors. It's not in locked away in file cabinets somewhere. This is in the public, in the community, with the community. So we recently just changed our logo, you know? So n nothing is, is um, uh, untouchable. We all have access to this entity, to this group, and we're all a part of it. So for anything from logos to, uh, to uh, how we're gonna do the research to the enhancement classes, we all have a voice in this group. And that's very, very important because I think we're so tired of having things done for us. Yes. You know, so I think it's time that we do it ourselves for ourselves and the way we want to see it done. Right. And I think it's more effective that way. And, and anyone who's considering joining, um, definitely call and get, uh, we'll have the information on the screen. But get information and, you know, ask questions, come meet some of the community members. You might already know a lot of them here. Um, but it, you should feel comfortable that it's our community right. that's putting it on for ourselves, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's not someone else doing that. I, I just wanted to add one more thing about the original class, and we know we're going to carry that over uh, into the enhanced version, is every week we got a chance to, sa to sample a really great uh, calorie conscious kind of lunch uh, that was prepared. And then we also got shopping tips, and we got uh, a small Safeway card that we could go do some shopping with that thought in mind mm -hmm. of what did I learn today about shopping? What new thing am I going to employ here? So we got uh, we got sample of food and compare notes about what, how, uh, about uh, uh, that new concept of, of um, serving food. Wow. Paul, could you run down the eligibility again for us? So Can yeah, recap that? off the top, um, you have to be 21 years or older. You cannot be diabetic already, diagnosed diabetic, um, but you can still be involved. Mm -hmm. You just can't be um, one, of the, one of the team members. Um, you also have to be native indigenous to basically from the border of Canada down uh, through the um, continents of America. But we're also looking at native Hawaiians are invited, uh, like I said, down in South America, native Mexicans. Um, so indigenous people of this land, we're calling you to come and join. And uh, there's some other smaller details, but if you're 21 and, and you hit any of those items I mentioned, you pretty much are gonna get in, so. Oh, let me ask you this. Where will the classes take place? They're gonna take place uh, in the Valley Medical Institute here um, off of Bascom, and I believe it's Moore Park. So we'll right be in San, San Jose. Jose. Yeah, okay. it's local. We have, uh, it's right off of bus route number 25. Um, and, uh, you know, the, once again, what makes this program unique is that we are the community. Mm -hmm. So if there's someone that wants to come out, we're going to find a way to get you there. Right. You can ride your bike and get exercise, right? <laughs> yeah, you can do that too. As long as you can survive the traffic, yeah, you'll be good. And so, Al, you think this will really help our community? I hope so. I think we're, we're you know, we're kind of going into different country now with the uh, historical trauma process and that's going to be interesting to follow up on see what that brings um, so anyway I, yeah I do think we need to we need to again because now we have a community in San Jose now that's been here for three generations American Indians um, so a lot of those people that are third generation now we'd like to get in touch with and find out how to you know work with them Mm -hmm. and uh, do things with them. So I think it's, it's an effective way to, uh, to do outreach. Yeah. Excellent. Well, I want to thank all of you for being here. 
and we'll have the information on the screen on how you can sign up and I would encourage your viewer the viewers at home that are indigenous please consider joining this because we want to prevent diabetes in our families amongst ourselves and even if you have a family member that means you're probably at risk too of getting it so try and do what you can to prevent it to help family members that have it and uh, let's keep our community healthy did you have a final word there's one thing i gotta mention uh there's no cost it's not going to cost you a thing you just got to come in and and uh, meet with us and all of these resources are available for you. This is a true native community uh, um, uh, organization that is here to for serve natives. the native people. There you go. Excellent. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you again next week. Good night.